my great pleasure to introduce to you Darren McLean. He is the chef and the owner of Downtown Food, a modern bistro on 8th. He is the creator of Calgary's Urban Ag Project, and if I may, for the first time, editorialize a little bit. I believe he is a true innovator, someone at the vanguard of this city's already amazing food scene. Please welcome one of the hottest chefs in Calgary, Darren McLean. Wow, that's quite bright. Well, this will just have to do space bar, right? That's the thing I don't want to mess up here. Okay, as I mentioned, uh, or as mentioned uh, my name is Darren McLean. I own uh, possibly one of the worst named restaurants in the history of restaurants, Downtown Food, where you can do all your local shopping downtown. No, um, um, this little image here is um, the start of something that we created earlier this year. Um, there's a great definition of rock that I found that was there. Any hard mineral mass um, is a rock. So in my case, the skyscrapers that surround downtown food um, are rock. Um, so in these rocks, we, uh, when you look around, the next sort of image that's going to be coming up here in a moment, um, any, of, any, any sort of structure, they're not really hospitable to life. We looked at some of these great mountain ranges that we saw, we didn't see any green things, trees. So here's my rock. Here's my little piece of, uh, and, and from this I wanted to make a bit of an urban oasis. Uh, great chefs should always be looking to great ingredients, so I don't have a farm, so I turn to the only sort of place I have. So when you start thinking about where am I, how am I going to grow a rock, you, know, you start to, or sorry, how am I going to grow a rock? He knows that, I know. Um, when you start thinking about these sorts of things, you have about a million questions. What am I going to grow? How is it going to work? Where is a, there we go, that's a little better. Um, how can we get the soil onto the roof? Uh, there's just all sorts of um, questions. I'm not a gardener. Um, am I crazy? Uh, these sorts of things have been to mind. So this is how you get things to grow on a roof, any way you can. So here's us stacking these planter boxes up onto uh, different canvases. This is a shipping container of the restaurant next door to us and then onto the roof. Uh, gentlemen here, the Leaf Ninjas, they're super awesome. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. They're really amazing state farmers. They're incredible. Um, and then we got to start thinking about, okay, first question, what are we going to grow? In our case, I don't have a clue, so we grew everything. <laughs> These are some seedlings. We had a design for oranges and such, but, uh, well, unfortunately, some things just aren't meant to be. Um, then we have to start looking at other uh, means of facilitating growth on a rooftop. So uh, the next sort of question was, okay, what are we going to feed these plants, or how are we going to water them? So again, mentioned the Leaf Ninjas, they gave us this really great idea, designed for a rain catch that we powered, uh, we powered it with solar power, and we used PVC piping in order to power the pumps to water the garden. Um, the next thing is sunlight. Sunlight is uh, incredibly important to growth, as we know, so we engaged in a really technical sun analysis, um, by which, uh, not a real picture, but yeah, we basically sat on our roof and drank beer and saw where the sun was gonna go. <laughs> Um, no, really, there was graphs and charts and all sorts of, no, there wasn't. We literally drank beer and watched the sun. Um, it's a very chef thing. Um, so we've got all these factors together, sun, soil, water. Uh, here's the problem. Although I look very happy and, and altruistic growing in my garden, uh, I'm not a gardener. I'm incredibly impatient, as most chefs sort of are. Um, so how the hell are we going to make this thing happen, really? I'm in over my head. Um, and it turns out that... Uh, there's a great community in, in Calgary. Sorry, this is the Casa community, not my community. Great show, watch it. I'm trying to emanate his hair. I don't know how I'm doing it. Um, we turned to people like Paul from Roxburgh Vegetables. We had uh, the Leaf Ninjas, as I mentioned. We had Elise Watson who uh, did our beehives on our roof. Yes, bees, we got 100 pounds of honey. I'll get into that in a minute. Um, and by talking to them, I realized that we needed moreover not just a place to grow things, but we had to facilitate and create an ecosystem on the roof. And this is a lot more challenging than you think. Um, you have to start thinking of the pests that are going to come. You have to think of, like I said, water, soil, sunlight. And what you realize is that you start to anal uh, sorry, analyze, I can't really say it. As you do a little analysis, thank you, of this, you start to figure out what you need. So in this case, this is a, a really great solution to the problem of pollination that occurs downtown. It's not like we're um, a real hub of nature on Stephen Avenue. So these are our beehives, uh, zucchinis behind them, and they did that. So our little garden's growing, we're very happy. Um, Jeff Goldblum, if you've seen Jurassic Park, he has this very elegant quote 
life will find a way. Um, life found a way to help start destroying some of our crops. We had uh, root maggots destroying our cabbages, leaf miner bugs uh, attacking our chard. So all of a sudden we're sitting here, what do we do? So we got predator bugs. Um, we started using other bugs to control good bugs using bad bugs. And all of a sudden we started to flourish. And, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. Sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little, I'm, I'm feeling lost. Um, it started to flourish. This is a really beautiful space. You're seeing it on the rooftop space. You're seeing plant life and things growing. So now we start asking ourselves, why garden? Really, what are you doing? You've created a ton more work for yourself. Um, this is an overview of the project in the early spring before the hops and the agrarian was installed. Um, food matters. Where food comes from and how it tastes and how it's produced and the treatment of the animals that are involved matters. And it matters because we're running out of farmland. We've got bees dying. We've got these things happening. So, moreover though, before just all the sustainability preaching, there's a human element that started to get factored in. So we're right next to a bunch of office buildings and all of a sudden we're getting tweets from different office buildings. Thank you cards. There's something that's intrinsically natural. We came together as a species, humanity. Uh, at first, we we're hunter-gatherers, and then we became to form civilizations around agriculture. And that's something that we don't really often think about, is we are a species of farmers. That's how we exist and, 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 and grow. So I guess what it all really comes down to when I, when I sort of think about it is we should be growing. This is another little view of our garden sort of in the fall. Let's grow in planter boxes. Let's grow on our balconies. Let's change the means of production so we can take our food system back and start owning the products that we, that we eat. It's, it's better for ourselves, the health of our community and our planet in, in a lot of ways. Human ingenuity, we conquered gravity in many ways. We've explored space, we've explored the oceans. Can we not really change the food system? Can we not start to find better ways to produce the food we eat? Because after all, and this is how I tie it into rock. I think there's a rock that really matters and I think it deserves to be protected. I think it's the most valuable rock of all. Thank you so much for your time.